when the vaccine came out and we began as healthcare professionals in Alameda County to have the conversation about distribution and, and systems and all of that, I said to, and many of my colleagues raised up the fact that brown and black people were having a really hard time. And so access was one, but some of them also were saying, no, I'm not taking that vaccine. I don't trust the system. I don't trust the pharmaceutical companies. You haven't proven to me that I should trust you with my health care. And it was amazing to me how many, and I'm going to, I have to be honest, Anglo care professionals stated, well, they're going to have to take it. It's in the best interest of everybody. And I kept saying to them, yes and no. No, they don't have to. And they're not going to until we figure out a way to have a conversation around trust and then how to implement it in a way that people feel like this is not just one of the science projects that is written about in medical apartheid. Um, and so, but they didn't know Dr. Pearl. And that was the thing that got to me. It's like, how can you be in a healthcare arena or a public policy arena and not understand how the policies that have been implemented might actually get in the way of the very thing that you're getting ready to try to do. Can you, Am I making sense? Because I, I, I saw it and I kept thinking, does anyone else see it this way? Or am I just like being the angry black woman? This, you know, for, Am I giving them an excuse to have that stereotype about me? Can you speak to that? I'd like to talk about two parts to this because they're both relevant and your perspectives are very accurate. You know, early in the vaccine, there's a shortage of vaccine. Policy experts say, how will we distribute it? So they look at the data and they say, people who are older tend to die more than people who are younger. So we'll make age a criterion. Then they look further and they say, 88% of people who die have two or more chronic diseases. So we'll make that a secondary criterion. And a lot of debate goes into play. But I didn't hear any conversation around the fact that African-American patients have a two to three times higher chance of dying. How is that not central to our conversation? Now, again, what people decide, that's complex. But the yeah. fact they don't talk about it, now you're raising a second part. And the last thing I would say to anyone who um, was black or brown is that you should have it for the greater good of society. You should have the greater good for your family and the people you love because you don't want to die which is what happens to a lot of people if they get COVID. Yeah. And I will tell you that just about everyone you know, knows someone who has died as a consequence. So it's not outside the box kind of thinking. Right. But having said that, what you're really raising is the black patient experience that goes back to Henrietta Lacks, the woman at Johns Hopkins, whose cells were used and are now sold for something like $10,000 a vial. And she and her family have gotten no dollars as a consequence, as opposed to the institution that did it. Or the Tuskegee experiments, where people, sharecroppers who were, uh, black sharecroppers were with syphilis, were told they were being treated at a time when we had the appropriate medication and they didn't receive it. And that's why I take people back to this ED experience. Or I'll give you another example. You know, we talked about Yale earlier where I was in medical school. Mm -hmm. There was a paper just published by a physician from Yale, from the emergency department, that looked at the issue of restraining patients. Now, getting tied down when you're sick is not a very good experience. Right. And guess what they found? Black patients were deemed agitated and tied down disproportionately to the clinical findings that they had. So figuring out how to address a distrust that has a solid foundation, but while at the same time recognizing that you need the vaccine because if you don't have the vaccine, you have a high chance of dying and you owe it to your family and to the people you love and your friends to get it. Mm -hmm. This kind of conversation somehow has yet 
to permeate the United States. We're at both ends of the extreme, but we can't come together in the middle.